Well, I'll give myself, I'll give an introduction for myself. So I'm Mark Catalano. I'm the co-founder uh, of Take Shape. And at Take Shape, we are building an API mesh for the Jamstack. And you might be asking yourself, what is an API mesh? Well, an API mesh allows you to combine um, APIs from a bunch of different decoupled services, places like Shopify, um, uh, uh, Contentful, uh, uh, Google Analytics, um, Auth0, uh, and it allows you com to combine those APIs into a single GraphQL API that you can use from the front end to build your application. Um, so the whole point of that is to make it really easy for front end developers uh, to be able to get access to a lot of the API functionality that maybe might traditionally be more restricted to somebody that's either a full stack dev or, or a backend dev. Uh, in addition to the API mesh at TakeShape, we also provide a data store. Uh, so if you need to do uh, data editing and content editing, we have facilities for, for you to do all of that as well. Today, what I'm gonna be showing off um, we show up. We tend to show off something kind of different each time uh, that we present at the the Jamstack Boston meetup. So, Steph and Jim, thank you for uh, for letting us <laughs> talk about Take Shape and and kind of tell people about what we're doing um, today. What I'm going to be showing off to everybody is um, a new integration that we just launched the other week, uh, which is our Auth0 integration. Um, which I think uh, Jaden from, from TakeShip was on last week uh, talking a little bit about, and I'm going to talk about it again today. Uh, and hopefully we'll get through the, the entire demo and it'll be pretty neat, I think. Uh, so this is, um, this is TakeShip's Auth0 integration. And why this is really interesting and kind of cool, and I'm going to share my screen in a second, is because it allows you to take Auth0 and apply it to pretty much any API that you might want to apply uh, Auth0 to or authentication to, um, and it lets you do that uh, all through the API mesh. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that and how to create. We're, what we're going to do in this little demo is basically build an application that essentially has user accounts where you can log in, and it's going to have the ability to of a user to update their user account, and then it's going to have the ability to display basic user account info information to like an anonymous user. So like, why would you want to do something like this? Well, if you have say like an e-commerce experience or shop e-commerce store, and you want to be able to do things like have um, customer accounts that also have reviews associated with them, this is exactly how you would go about doing that. Or if you had a blog and you wanted to have user accounts on your blog, say for, um, uh, for paid users, and you also wanted to have comment information, um, or you wanted to have like information, uh, you could do all of that by using an API mesh and uh, coupling that with, with some, an authentication provider like Auth0. So I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to go through this, this thing together. It shouldn't take too long. All right. OK, can everybody see my screen? Yeah, looks great. OK, awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to work off this Take Shape starter auth repo. Um, and what we're going to do, we're, we're going to just follow the steps through, through this experience. And basically, this is going to show you kind of how easy it is to get an API mesh like Take Shape working with something like Auth0. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do, uh, the first thing to know about this, this sample project is that it's a Next.js project. So it's a Next.js static site generator project. Um, you could deploy this project up to, uh, at the end of this project, once you're done, you could deploy this to Netlify, you could deploy it to uh, Vercel, and you would have a fully functional um, uh, user account system running on one of these providers powered by TakeShape and, and Auth0. So we're going to start at the beginning. Uh, basically, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make an account on Auth0, uh, which we already did. And then we're going to start building um, uh, building the uh, the actual um, the actual uh, setup that we need on Auth0. So we're going to create an application. Um, there's a bunch of interesting things about Auth0 that are kind of uh, kind of confusing, like when they call things applications versus APIs. And a lot of this setup is basically just trying to help help you get through that kind of confusing part. Um, and that's all. This is just the the elements that you need to be able to to create a um, an Auth0 uh, service 
Um, Auth0 can sometimes be a bit confusing, but we're, we're trying to make the instructions really easy for you here. So we're just going to make a take shape uh, application. And then we have to configure this application correctly. Um, the first thing that we're want, going to want to grab um, is our domain, which is really important to a project that is running with, uh, with Auth0. Um, I usually, whenever I see something like this where in an instruction where it tells me, hey, you need to like take note of this for later, I usually open up a basic um, text editor and then I start copying things into my text editor. So the instructions here are telling me, hey, you got to copy this domain out. So I'm going to just drop that into a text editor. And that basically looks like, looks like this right here. Um, I'm just going to keep it in my other window so you don't have to look at it. Um, but I'm copying that out. And then I need to set up a bunch of basic um, callback URLs um, and some other little things here that we need to configure. And these all just allow the application to actually work. If you were to put this into production, you would want to just update these URLs or you'd want to create a separate application that was using your live URLs. Um, since we're doing this all in localhost, we're just going to use the localhost URLs. Um, so this lets me go ahead and set up my cores and my web origins and my logout URL. And then once all that's done, uh, important to know about Auth0, they don't have auto saving uh, and their save buttons in like a super weird location. So always make sure you go to the bottom of the screen and click save. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take start taking advantage of TakeShape here. So this repository is a publicly available repo. Um, it's a starter project, and TakeShape provides a whole bunch of different starter projects. And I'll kind of load up uh, our account here so people can see. Um, but we provide starter projects for all sorts of different stuff. Um, we provide Next.js starter projects, Gatsby starter projects, uh, blogs, uh, e-com sites, portfolios, job boards, bookstores, um, blogs of all sorts of different kinds, and Next.js and React. Um, we provide a bunch of different starters for a bunch of different use cases. But the idea of all these starters is that you're launching them, you're launching essentially an API onto TakeShape. Um, flipping back to our, our Auth0 starter here, um, this is basically the, the components of a Next.js project with one kind of important difference. There's a thing up here called TakeShape pattern. And inside the pattern repository is a file called pattern YAML roles and schema. And these are the files that are going to be deployed to TakeShape to configure our API and to set up all of the different elements that we need for it to work with uh, work with Auth0. Um, so our schema is going to define, our schema really defines the core API that we're going to set up. And this is, you know, this is um, just showing you guys this is uh, is kind of like putting you out into the wilderness a bit. But just understand that this schema defines uh, a GraphQL API. Um, the roles YAML file um, defines a bunch of different roles that our schema and works with with Auth0. You don't really need to know the, the, the nitty gritty of this for, for the demo purposes, but it's helpful to see that these YAML files are, um, are something that you could edit and modify as you needed. Um, and you could also remix and then share in, in repositories. So if you needed to create a project or you needed to make your TakeShape project portable, you could do all of that through this pattern directory here by just simply having a pattern that contains all the information that you need in order to bootstrap up a, a project on TakeShape. So continuing down, we're going to follow the directions and we're going to actually click this button here, which it means that we're ready to actually create the project on TakeShape. So we're going to click the deploy to TakeShape button. And we're going to get this screen over here, which basically allows us to start building a sample, a project based on that pattern. So our pattern was called the Auth0 starter, um, and we're going to name it. We're going to call this Auth0 starter Jamstack. Austin. This is going to go and look at that pattern directory, and then it's going to pull in all that information, and it's configuring an API for us. So we now have a whole schema um, based on uh, the schema that was available inside of our pattern. 
um, and we have uh, roles that are now available to us based on that pattern, specifically this Auth0 role that was imported for us. Um, and then we get to continue on working on our project. So if we wanted to define additional um, uh, data types here, which we call shapes in Take Shape, we could do that. Um, we have access to uh, you know, the full data store that Take Shape has. Um, but right now, for the purposes of the demo, we're going to start connecting Auth0. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start connect, connecting a new service. So Take Shape supports a bunch of different APIs that you can connect to, um, any GraphQL, any REST API. Uh, we also have an automatic open API uh, importer, so you can, you can bring in APIs that are open API based. And we have default configurations for things like BigCommerce and Netlify, Shopify, Vercel, MailChimp, uh, and specifically for this demo, Auth0. So I'm going to click on the Auth0 service, and we're going to be configuring this. I'm going to just give it a name. I'm going to call it Auth0. Um, I need to give it the domain that we copied earlier from our, our Auth0 account. Um, and then my instructions on the, the repo are, are going to tell me that I need to copy out this, this audience, which is another element of um, audience is another element of the uh, of the, the auth zero system that we and the authentication system that we just need to be aware of. Uh, I'm going to hit save on this and it's going to go ahead and, and set up my auth zero configuration. Flipping back over to my instructions, I'm going to generate, the next thing it wants me to do is generate an API key. So my next JS project is going to need an API key to, to talk to TakeShape. So I'm going to go ahead over to API. I'm going to start to generate a new API key. I'm going to just call it Auth0 next project. Uh, I'm going to give it read permissions because I, I just want it to be able to, to read. Uh, and then it's going to generate an IP, API key. I'm going to copy that key again to my little scratch file that I'm working with over on off the screen. And now I've got kind of my initial setup. If I flip back to my instructions, uh, I'm going to go back to my Auth0 account, and now I have to create an API. So again, this is just another element of the authentication process. Uh, I'm going to go to my API screen in Auth0. I'm going to create an API. I'm going to call my API take shape API. Um, I need my identifier, uh, which is actually the audience. So like I said, the, 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 the things that have to do with auth can sometimes be confusing and sometimes they switch the names around of what something's called. So my identifier here is the same as an audience. I'm going to leave my signing algorithm alone and I'm going to hit create. Uh, inside my settings uh, over here, uh, actually we're done at this point. We're, we're looking, we're going to be inside of our settings for a second. Um, but we're done. Our, our API is configured. Um, we're ne ne the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over to our, our local environment and we're going to actually clone the this sample project repository. So I've already gone ahead and done that. Um, this is the sample project repository that I've cloned. And it's going to ask us to create this env local file. Uh, and the env local file is basically just um, configuring the Next.js project with a bunch of different elements that it needs for, um, for, uh, for actually connecting to Auth0 and to take shape. So this file is one that we've created kind of at, at everybody for folks' convenience, and it just explains to you exactly how to do, how to fill all this out. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is generate an, a secret, and we uh, the README there gives you a little bit of guidance about how to do that. I've gone ahead and I've um, I've just run this command, which is just going to give me the, the 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 secret string that I, I need to use. We're using localhost 3000 as our base URL. If you were to deploy this into production, you'd want this to to be the actual production URL that you're using. Um, we need an auth0 issuer base URL, which again is the domain. Um, and the name has changed here. They've decided they, you know, the name, the naming convention changes from one context to the, to the next. And we give you a little clue about how to format this URL. And then we need our client IDs. So we need uh, some information from Auth0. So we need the client ID. So we'll go ahead and grab that. We need the client secret. We'll go ahead and grab that. 
uh, the project comes pre-filled with the scopes that we want. So in this case, we want open ID, profile, and email. Um, and then we need our audience URL, which we copied from earlier from TakeShape. Uh, we need our TakeShape API URL and API key. And I had copied out our API key from earlier. So I'm going to just plug that in. And then to get your API URL, we're going to go over to TakeShape, the API screen. And then I'm just going to click over here. Our API endpoint is here. Uh, and once we have that, we should be good to go. The next step is actually running all of this. So in my and from my CLI, I'm going to just run dev, which will bring up our dev environment. Brings it up that fast. And then the thing that we're actually going to be interacting with finally is this sample project here. Awesome. So this is, uh, this is the sample project. Um, it's, it's just a basic website to show you the idea that you can log in and display information to uh, anonymous users. So right now, our sample project has no anonymous users in it. So we've got no profiles to display. And I'm currently not logged in, so I'm an anonymous user. So I'm going to hit that login button, and then I'm going to actually log in to my Auth0 account. I'm going to log in using my fake Auth0 account, and then I successfully log in. So this is the equivalent of like some of a user's landing page. Um, it's letting me know that I've logged in, and now I can go to my account page. And uh, I've already pre-filled in some data for myself here, um, but I could make changes to this data. Um, uh, and I could update this. If I wanted, I could give myself an avatar. Um, and you can just see the, the confirmation step here that it's just saying, hey, your profile is, is as following. Um, it's not a beautiful UI, but it's just meant to be an example of kind of how this all works. Um, the kind of point at which this gets neat is if I had more users, they could be logging in. Um, and then I'm going to log out and I'm going to actually look at the, the anonymous user view. So here's my profile as a totally anonymous user without having logged in. Um, I can see that, um, you know, I can see a subset of my profile information. So, you know, my email address is blanked out and I just have my name and, and, uh, and, and my bio. So this is basically the full flow of, of taking somebody through the ability to, um, to create, a uh, uh, a user account to have um, anonymous users, uh, anonymous versions of the data, um, and hooking it all back up into an API mesh, which lets you then plug into pretty much any other API that's a GraphQL or REST API, REST API that you might want to use, um, and uh, gives you all the abilities to work with APIs that would otherwise need their need to deal with authentication or private keys or have caching or indexing adding added all to them without having to actually touch any backend code. That's that's what the API mesh gives you. And Jim earlier had asked a question about like, well, is this data, like where is this data live that you're storing? And could you add additional fields and do different things with the data? And if we go over to the take shape view, we've now got our Auth0 service connected. Um, and if I pop over into a profile, my profiles, this is my actual profile as as the, a person that's logged in. Um, so as an administrator, I could go and like edit somebody's profile. Um, if I wanted to, I could extend this uh, the functionality uh, with additional data fields here. If I wanted my user to fill out additional data, as long as I fit that back into my client application, all of that stuff would work. Um, so this is kind of uh, how you would build build authentication and auth0 into take shape the perp the, the hopefully the takeaway from all of this is that uh when things work correctly uh an api mesh combined with uh, with auth an authentication layer can help you basically protect any kind of api with authentication that you would potentially want to protect and it allows you to build up a full user account experience without having to use any other uh, without basically having to try to talk directly to a database or um, 
uh, or do anything else. Uh, the, the goal is really to walk you through the, the uh, you know, creating a, a basic user account system as, you know, as quickly as, as possible. Does anyone have any questions for Mark? Okay, I, I just had a quick question, Mark. So when you set up a like an authentication system like this with Auth0, could you do like, are you at the point where you could start doing like full CRUD applications in a, like a Jamstack way? Like, could you also, you know, cause TakeShape has CMS functionality on the back end. Could I like log into my Jamstack site and then create new things that then save to take shape and then have those displayed in like, like a to-do list or something like that? Yeah, you, that's a, that's exactly what you could do. So what you what you would see what you see in that demo is um, if if it was if it was functioning correctly, what you would see is you would have you would basically have the ability to actually uh, modify your own profile. And what that is doing essentially is saying like, hey, you can modify any um, any data that is owned by your account. Um, so if, if you owned or permissioned to your account, so if you had the ability to say, um, you know, create to do's, you could do that. And then you could use take shapes data store to, to, to store the to do's if you wanted to, or if you wanted to use something completely different to store to do's, like you had a to do service that provided to do's as an API, you could protect those to do's, um, and that to-do API with Auth0. And then you could associate to-dos that are stored in that third-party service with a, with a user that is coming from Auth0 and passing through TakeShape's API mesh. So it, it allows you to build a full CRUD application. Um, and then kind of what's important there is not only is it, um, not only do you get the ability to like authenticate into that, but you have anonymous authentication as well. So like, just anonymous users that are completely unauthenticated would could have their own view of that data. Um, so if I wanted to have comments or reviews that's you know that are unauthenticated, where like an unauthenticated user can read reviews, they can see, hey, this person posted it and this is what they said. But me as an authenticated user, I could go in and modify my own reviews. That's like the essence of like a you know like a, a CRUD application. Um, that this this kind of setup allows you to do that. So if you had reviews that were say being fed by a third party review service, which is a pretty common scenario for people that build Shopify sites, um, you know those third party reviews, you could build an entire user account system with TakeShape and that third party service and Shopify to feed reviews into your let's say headless Shopify experience. Awesome. Yeah, sounds really cool. I have a quick question on it, actually. Um, uh, just in developing uh, Take Shape into different parts, uh, what what do you feel has been the most challenging part of, like, what was the most challenging part uh, of developing everything so far for you? Building the application, building the whole application. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just maybe your favorite or most challenging, I guess, whichever. I mean, the the most challenging thing that we've done is is had to deal with. Um, uh the the idea of api like just the concept of what these things should do is is i would say one of the most challenging things that you you overcome when you build a service like take shape so you know just knowing figuring out what product to, to create and and what problems exist uh for for devs i mean that that's like one of the hardest challenges to to overcome um so there's no, I would say there's no one technical challenge that that's large. It's actually a product challenge of, of figuring out what to build and what to put your attention on. Mm -hmm. The hardest technical challenge is probably like figuring out um, this, like figuring out actually how the API meshing should work and how you can pull in any API and in, into, mm -hmm. into a mesh and, and make that work. Um, mm -hmm. There's like been some, um, work done are in that area in general like services like apollo have the idea of schema uh, mm -hmm. federation and schema stitching and so mm -hmm. there's some ideas around that but our the way that our system works is is pretty different than than the way that um apollo. the way that something like an apollo uh apollo right. works any other questions or happy to 
pass the microphone to the next next speaker. All right. Thanks well, again. Thanks, thanks again, so Mark, much for your time.